So um, before, before, as you mentioned earlier, when you were introducing the, the, the film, uh, this is his second uh, uh, long metrage uh, after Tukibuki. Mm -hmm. Before Tukibuki, he had, I believe, two short films, uh, uh, Badu Boy. Boy, and before that, Ville uh, Contrast, Contrast City, Contrast City, mm -hmm. City Badu Boy. All these were short films. Then he had Bukibuki, which was the big event that it was in 1973. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned earlier, 20 years later, he did this one, uh, uh, Yen. Again, again, a, a story of Yen, because Tukibuki, uh, or the, Buki is Yen in uh, Hyena in, uh, in Wolof. And uh, so, and after that, he made two other short films uh, La Vendeuse de Soleil, Le Franc, mm -hmm. first Le Franc, and La Vendeuse de Soleil. Uh, it was, he was supposed to have a third one because he wanted to make a trilogy and he ended up just doing the two. And I think he was, he just finished La Vendeuse de Soleil when he died. He, he, he died mm -hmm. after, after that. I don't think he, he saw the, the complete uh, uh, thing. Now, in terms of time, 1973, when he made Dukibuki, 1973 is the first year of drought in Senegal. That was a turning point after 13 years of independence. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the drought, the big drought in Senegal started in 1973. It's so a kind of cycle right. from 72 to almost the, uh, the, the 90s. Mm -hmm. And at the end of those years, 70s, this is when uh, uh, early 19, when the World Bank yes. and the IMF imposed in everywhere in Africa, the so-called uh, uh, so, uh, structural adjustment programs, which is basically, uh, you know, increased poverty. So this movie is really a movie about the structural adjustment program imposed by the World Bank, the IMF. That is the atmosphere, this general poverty mm -hmm. uh, that was created in the name of adjustment. You have to adjust your economies uh, and so on. So the two movies, one in 73 and one in 92, 20 years later, really correspond to that period, economic period in, in Africa in general, in Senegal in, 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 uh, in, in particular, when the, the so-called uh, Washington, Chicago consensus, the, the school of thinking of uh, Chicago basically uh, decided that um, well, social uh, structural adjustment programs were necessary and that meant uh, that was supposed to mean uh, less state uh, um, uh, meaning also uh, uh, huge unemployment because the state was not hiring anymore. The only, the only sectors in which some hiring was still going on was education and, and, and health. And even there, it was. So these were the hard, uh, the, the very um, dire period. When was the the evaluation of the Yeah, a year, a year later. I'm uh, oh, sorry, what was the 93? The, oh, the big devaluation of the CFR. Okay. The CFA French was divided, the value was divided into two, two by the French Prime Minister because the, the currency is linked to the French currency. It's the currency of uh, age before eight francophone countries of yeah. West Africa. And still the case, one of the, one of the mm -hmm. big movement today is basically fueled by that revendication, the delinking with France and delinking the currency with, with the euros. So the last two short movies are really about that. that. They come after this huge event that the devaluation was mm -hmm. and the increase of poverty. 
and he wanted to make movies. He had always made movies about the, the little guy, the little people. And that was the time when he made that one. So yeah, this corresponds yeah. to the time leading towards the uh, devaluation and Senegal is under structural adjustment program at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, our bosses were the IMF and the World Bank. Mm -hmm. And you had to do what they, what they wanted. And, and, and the, the, the context actually, you want to frame the way in which uh, the beauty of Mambeti as a filmmaker is intervening in the debate. His first movie is Contrast City. And Contrast City is a filming from, from above of Dakar. No dialogue, no nothing. It's just images of the city. And it's 69. And he is part of a movement which is supported by the state, actually. You, you know, we. The, 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 the kind of making of the Senegalese, uh, um, uh, you know, of the Senegalese cinema. And, and you see the trajectory from that first film to uh, the 19th, 1970s film and documentary. It's quite clear that he's part of this of the creation of such a cinema, of the creation of a language, of a filmic language, which allowed the impact of the presidents and more to include in his vision of our culture and art has actually the driver of development. And as Bashir was saying, uh, you know, hyenas is the closing of because with the structural adjustment, it's the collapse of the whole architecture of the Senegalese post-colonial state, which is a state which is uh, uh, financing, uh, you know, investing in education, investing in culture, in building, you know, museum, investing in, 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 in art, exhibit and, and, and what is interesting is the way also in which his own language if you want to is, is changing because the only thing he does in the 80s is, is, is one documentary about grammar about grandmothers about oral tradition and he disappeared he disappeared completely nobody knows where he is well, he lives, what he does. And he comes back with hyenas in the 90s. And, and this is something which is very interesting also because he's, if you want, his artistic curve is basically following, if you want, the trajectory of the Senegalese society and then the Senegalese economy. And, and, and hyenas is, is a really deep reflection on what is happening in this country uh, to people and to, in particular, ordinary people and, 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 and people uh, and poor people. is also a reflection on what Bashir will say on the structural adjustment program and the effect of the structural adjustment in, in, in the society. But he does it, we'll talk about that, he does it in a very, very in a completely different way. He's a marginal among, among not only Senegalese, but among African filmmakers. By the way, it was in the credits, but uh, he is the judge. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's yeah. him. That's his. Uh, yeah. He's the assistant of Lydia Ramat. Yeah. <laughs> Who was in Who is on top? Um, well, I would have follow up questions, but I want to um, ask Nora to uh, join us. I hope you can hear us okay. Um, thank you so much again for joining us. And we've been in several conversations about other films in the past with, with Bashu and, and Mamadou. So it's really nice to be together again. Um, would you like to continue with uh, 
with a question. Um, absolutely. Um, good evening. Can you can you hear me well? It's not too loud. Not too. It's okay. Okay. Wonderful. Um, I'm I'm very happy to join you. So um, so yes, um, I had this question about the, the general context and also. Um, the question of um, there's of, of course a historical and political reading and many of them um, that are possible about this film but at the same time there's also this um, these two artistic obsessions um, the the one about western um, uh, and the one about um, a play um, that was very famous at the time that was um, first played in 1956 by Duren Matt, a Swiss playwright, The Visit of the Old Lady, which is also um, about the, the trope of the coming back to the native village. And, um, and he was obsessed about the, you know, making his own Western and, and adapting, um, adapting this display. This so um, what is is high end is a western or is yes so i'd like to to hear you um about these two partial origins there are images which are definitely images of western that he plays with that i mean he he, he uses images of that you would expect to see in, in western movies and in a way the whole the whole story of uh, uh this uh, German, Swiss German uh, playwright also, the, the, the visit is, is the kind of, uh, of simple story of uh, revenge upon which Western movies usually are also, also built. I think probably uh, uh, Mambeti was, was attracted to, to this story because it is so Western-like type of, of story as, as well with the, the, so the, the climax being this uh, uh, final confrontation in a Western, classical Western, you would have, you know, Clint Eastwood facing Lee Van Cleef, and then you would have your look at, uh, and all the, all the ingredients that make the, a, a nice Western. In a way, you have that same thing. Plus, obviously, the, the coat wanted, the wanted sign of, uh, for, uh, uh, for Drama and Drame, who discovers that he is now wanted, there is a bounty on his. Uh, so he, he, you, you can you can see that he is playing with Western uh, style. And, and I think you have a really clear sign that he is doing that. Uh, I don't know if he be, it's his reading of Duran Man with a western lens because if you he, the beginning of the movie is uh, you know a beginning in the in, in the in the in the bar and these people who are drinking you have also you have also the the, the horses you have a train you have a prostitute and you have all these intermediaries going back and forth so he's really playing in that and this is part of, of of who he is has uh, has a director, but also had he began his career as a uh, theater artist. He was an actor at the National Diet Serrano. He knows actually. He knows basically. He, you know, he the kind of library of plays. But he knows also. He knows also cinema and this. You know, the culture of his generation, uh, you know, uh, born in the suburb of Dakar, like where I was born, my older brother is his age, uh, you, you know, they used to go to the movies. I didn't have that chance, but what they were seeing was basically, you know, uh, Western, what they call quote unquote, because the Western were not part of, of, of American cinema. American cinema was, you know, Hogarth or what's say, and, and Nollywood. It, it is why you have two totally different cultures in his own generation. People who were in Western having, you know, nicknames, John Wine or whatever. Mm -hmm. And people who were in the, in the Hollywood thing, Errol Flynn, you know, the Senegalese people at 70, 80 can tell you, all the names of 
American actors who are playing in in Western, and you have another group who can tell you all the stars of Indian cinema, and who are able to sing all these songs, <laughs> you, you know, from the Western and from. It's why you have the songs also, who is from his brother, who is also part of the way in which he, you know he is illustrating. Uh, you know, the themes he's dealing with. And these are the real references, footnotes to, uh, footnotes to, to, to move. Because I think he said one time that uh, his brother is interesting as a musician because he is, he illustrates sonically ideas, his, his filming. Can you can you um, develop a little bit more about how this film is a is a critique of Senegalese society in the in that time period and um, you know what 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 is it providing in terms of a social commentary? Yeah, yeah, you know, all of the social commentary turn around. You have you have a mayor, but you have a number. Uh, you know, character who is quite ambiguous, who is in between a priest and a Muslim cleric. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the whole, his way of dealing with the society and the fact that people are ready to kill Draman to get the money is the collision, according to me, between the politician, the mayor, and the religious, which is a description of the way in which the Senegalese society has and the Senegalese political culture has been generated and supported. What I call an Islam wall of state, a state which is built on social, moral, and political considerations which are still borrowing from that culture, which is the culture of the largest, uh, of the largest group. What is interesting with him is he does it in a very poetic and quote and quote surrealist way. If you compare him to Semben, Semben is very, very ethnographic and very sociological and political, and he's playing with the space and the social classes. He's doing here you don't see the state actually. You don't see anything which is the state. But, but at the same time, you see that the mechanics he is unveiling are the mechanics of, 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 of the state which is dominating and impoverishing the society because of, of, of the corrupt uh, 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 constitution. So, 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 but uh, as I say, he's much more a kind of poet, much more, uh, you know, uh, looking at things from, from, from below, but not going to a kind of very expressive uh, denunciation. That's true. I mean. Semben is very demonstrative. I mean, yeah. He's very straightforward, right? but mm -hmm. he wants to say politically and so on and so forth. He's more playful. Mm -hmm. Job Mambeti is very playful, which is, and he, he likes to have these these, these symbols. And uh, you know, I mean, um, you 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 see elephants. You ask yourself why. You start with elephants, and yeah. at one point. When uh, Linger Ramatou mentioned that she never forgets, you say, okay, memoir d'elephant, mm -hmm. the, the French expression, that right. is the, <laughs> the, 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 the animal that doesn't forget. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, he has also explained that the, the hyenas, why, why hyenas are interesting for him, they smell, they, they, they sniff out what is going to happen. They yeah. are very patient, very patient animals. They, uh, he explained, he, he had an interview in which he said that hyenas never kill. They don't kill themselves. 
they follow someone who is going to die and they wait for them to, 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 to die. So this is the kind of thing he, he, he does, not the very heavy political demonstration and making you know, statements, political statements. The political statements, political statements are there. I mean, denouncing corruption, the fact that money is corroding all the so-called traditional African solidarity. I mean, that's the first gesture of the mayor. The first time the mayor hears that incredible proposition, he says, this is Africa, this is not the United States, we don't do that. <laughs> and we end up doing it. Uh, and the idea that uh, uh, this is a period also during the structural adjustment program where you would hear people saying that the, that the society had, you know, is now upside down, that traditional values are disappearing because uh, there was this official discourse about Africans having, being very uh, uh, um, communal, traditional solidarity, building uh, uh, connections, etc. And what he's saying is, well, this can be at the mercy of money. It takes the kind of money investment of the World Bank, etc. And all these traditional, traditional solidarity may disappear there. This is something also that Sander Usman says, but uh, in a more direct way, like in Hala, when he describes the uh, uh, Senegalese bourgeoisie. So it's very interesting to read them together, together. to read the mm -hmm. cinema of uh, Sander Usman in connection with, uh, because he, he quotes in a way, he quotes Sander Usman also, that contrast city, this, is, this corresponds to Sander Usman's Borom Sarem opposing two cities, the, the, the plateau in Dakar, that we see at the, at towards the end, 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 because Lingya Ramatu is seeing Dakar from Gore. In fact, that is the most beautiful view that you can have of, of Dakar, the same way we say here that the best place in, uh, in the tri-states is New Jersey, because you see <laughs> Manhattan and our, our skyline. Gore also is wonderful if you want to look at Dakar and the skyline of Dakar, which we see. This is the yeah. first time we are seeing the bigger picture because until then we were in Colovan and the camera was just on, on the sand, on the, on the buildings of Colovan, old building, you know, crumbling. The carpet. Right. Yeah, totally yeah. decrepit, etc. And this is the moment when we breathe, we have the, the sea. We remember that Dakar is a, is a peninsula and that there is Gore and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. Yeah. And what, what he is so true because you have you have a song which goes you know throughout the movie yes. which is never translated never yeah. that, that you you don't have a job you cannot feed yourself that's and what that's what the words are can, can, yeah, yeah can you really be free mm -hmm. and it it is the song. Mm -hmm. The one but it's is never, uh, this is also the other fascinating aspect. It's, it's the axis along which the movie, the story is told, but it's not presented in a kind of Semben way. In terms of, of, um, in terms of, of um, I can hear my voice, and visual power, Beyonce or Black Panther have actually been quoting um, sometimes um, uh, Mambeti Job's um, um, work, actually. So, um, which is ironic in terms of, of uh, you know, of, of commercial, commercial use and, 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 and money. Um, Le, the film first, at least in Senegal, was was entitled uh, had bore the name of the protagonist. It was Ramatou La Boniche. So it was Ramatou the maid first, um, and she's supposed to be the protagonist. Um, what are your thoughts about the, the her character? And uh, is 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 she a, is she the heroine? Is she the the protagonist? or not and when what does she stand for i mean i'm very moved i'm very fascinated actually by this rare character so i'd like to hear you about about her yeah i i think that uh, it's an interesting question to read 
the movie paying attention to two principles which are, it seems to me, the two principles which are around which, you know, many African societies, in particular, the, the, the Senegalese community have been, the, you know, the, the kind of the generation principle and the gender one, and the way in which he's presenting it. Because when he first shows when these notables are arriving in the bar, you have these younger people who were drinking alcohol, uh, retreating and letting the chair to them. So he is showing that tension, the tension between, uh, you know, uh, the older generation and the young generation. I think his way of treating women is very ambiguous because he's building his gender perspective on one hand on, on Lingera Matu, but on the other, he's building it on the, of the woman, the wives of, of, of these uh, uh, impoverished uh, community. And the interesting aspect is also, you know, when uh, we talk about Tukibuki. Tukibuki is also built always, he's always way building his moving with his ten, with gender tension, which are never resolved actually. And he's, he's also one with Semben, one of the, one of the uh, you know, two seniors who uh, are really treating sexuality as a thing and homosexuality. In all the movies, you have always, you know, one of the characters who is here, you know, people who are castrated. Uh, but in, in, in Tukibuki, you have a man also who is, uh, who is. And I think that the way he's showing that those categories are floating and he's putting them as themes for discussion, which is not something in particular if you compare with the literature which is, uh, which is present. But it's also the context. Uh, probably the other movie director who was his friend who died in 2010, uh, Johnson Traore, who actually did a documentary on Gibril Job Mambeti, 2008, which is called Mambeti Forever. Mm -hmm. His two first movies are movies around, around women who began the question in, in, in Senegal. Uh, the first was the girl, the second was the woman. And, and, and they are, I think, the, because Semben is very, very different. Uh, the way he treats the gender issue. And the importance, like in the video, the prostitute is always the figure, the actor which is changing the society because she is a radical outsider. And, 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 and it's interesting, of course, to, 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 to see this idea of, of a radical, of a revolution to change or redefine gender relation in a society like this society. But, but, but I think that, I don't know, I am not sure that the focus uh, was, uh, or we can look, read it, you know, focus on drama and drama, or the focus on, on, on Linge Ramatu, is what I call the unresolved tension. Now, what are, what are your thoughts about his character? Because it's it's hard to see him as an you know as an evil, hateful person. I mean, he's 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 her goal is to you know exact revenge on him, but he's not someone who appears to be uh, I don't know worthy of that <laughs> that kind of vindictive attitude, and and his and also his. You know his attitude over over the course of the movie. By the end, how do you interpret his role and where he comes to by the by, by the time of that last scene? 
But you know, all these uh, people in this room, none of them is an actor. Mm -hmm. And all of them are his friends. And they are marginal people in Senegal. <laughs> This is, but is why when you say what you say, you don't know at some point, I know half of them, at some point you don't know they are, I, I, he passed away two years ago, a professor, who, who, is, who is also a, Joe Wakam. Joe Wakam, a painter. <laughs> you, you don't know if they are playing or not. It's like drama. He is not, a, he, he's not an actor. He was completely unknown. But his younger, his older brother was the most important francophone actor of West Africa, francophone journalist of West Africa, Barry. Barry. And him, it seemed that he had, before this movie, he was just drinking, living his life, and not being part of nothing. And I think he brought that. He brought the culture of being a marginal. You, you know, from a prominent family, you know, his, his brother was the number three or five of the women in the But he was completely somewhere else. And, and, and I think it's what he, he, he wrote on, uh, on the movie. He's like the professor. Actually, in his everyday life, he was exactly like what you see him here. He talks like the women. <laughs> only, only the mayor yeah. and, 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 uh, and Bible, the, the mayor and Bible are yeah. actors. Uh, the mayor actually is in a in a Sambian movie, the Manda. Yeah. He, he plays the, in the, mm -hmm. the Manda, Mandagi of uh, uh, Sambian. But those are the only two actors. There are many people that I yeah. know always also. It's the assistant. And, <laughs> the mayor and most the of them are dead. Well now. Uh -huh. Most of the actors are there. They are, yeah. yeah, many of them. Yes. All, almost all of them. Yeah, well, yes. Bible is there. The Bible is there. Joe. Joe. Yeah, yeah. Joe Wakam. Joe Wakam is the professor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and even Mansur. Yeah. And, and the other one who was in a movie of Sambet is the one who came and asked for this. Very, very, very expensive gin and took the bottle. Mm -hmm. He in Gelwa. He's in Gelwa. He, he is the, 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 the actor in Gelwa. He passed away. Um, I think Nora wanted to ask a, a question uh, about. Um, which I'm also curious to know what your interpretation is of the of the last scene in this movie and, and the ending with his, you know, the scene with where he's surrounded and then when they pull away, there's just his jacket on the ground. Um, how do you interpret that last scene? What's your reading of that? I don't know, Nora. I, when I, you know, first time I saw it, it reminded me uh, it reminded me of Hala. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the way <laughs> in which he is surrounded. Yeah. 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 Because you have the same group of people at the beginning. The, the, the poor people yeah. who come and start uh, spitting on him and yeah. surrounding yeah. him, etc. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it looks like a. And uh, actually, I connected that to what uh, uh, Lingya Ramatu told him when he. Uh, visited her and she says, uh, well, you will come to this uh, location and you will belong to me forever. In other words, she actually his killing means that she owes him. Yeah. You, you're not dealing with a dead body. It is her, his disappearance and he is taken wherever Lingya Ramatu wants now to have him. Uh, and and this explains probably, I mean, I connect that with the fact that she is going down these stairs into something that looks like a cavo, uh, which is about the, the way the kind of thing you find on, on Gore Island as well. I mean, Jibri Job Mameti is using that, this idea of Linger Ramatu going down into some place where you would expect 
uh, dead people to be to be buried at the very moment when he is being killed so he disappears there and so the idea would be that all he has left is his jacket now body and soul are Dinge mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. one way of reading yeah. it. And I think it's also about going to going to the water, to the sea. Mm -hmm. And it's something which we, again, Mati Job uses the same thing. Well, the sea is very <laughs> present in the Job family, yes. Yeah, because they are <laughs> probably labeled like me. So yeah. <laughs> the idea that the sea is something else. You know that Senegalese immigrants, when they are Lebu, they go to Staten Island. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the sea, always the sea. But, but the, the, the last um, image, the bow bow. Uh, it's one. We don't have a director. <laughs> we don't have a director with us, obviously, but we have um, Mamadou and Ambesha and Nora, and I just wonder if any of you would like to ask a question, because we do have uh, microphones. Raise your hand if you want to ask a question. Other not, otherwise, we will continue for a few more minutes here. No. Okay. So, Nora, back to you. Yes. Oh, oh there is a question. Yeah. Oh, can, you come, can you come over to the microphone? Yeah. We can hear you. So, Nora can hear you. And you might want to take your mask off. Okay. Never. Good evening. Good evening. I just wanted to say that, yeah, like, um, like I wonder, um, okay, let me put myself together. I feel like um, there are so many things that was not translated because I speak a lot. So I kind of enjoyed the movie more. And I was wondering if this happened with every long uh, movie that it's kind of like uh, it is translated. But the fact that this movie to me was shown at Cannes, and in a way the movie is very on Senegalese to me, I did not feel connected to the movie at all. I can't imagine like how Ramatu, Linga Ramatu was that better because and people come together to kind of kill their own. And it's kind of like I didn't picture Senegalese like society at all like that. And I I felt like in a way it was just kind of like how France maybe treats West Africa with the debt and putting people in debt and not caring about community. I thought that was very Western. And it may be sad because I'm like even when we are celebrated as Africans, it's never about what is ours. It's always how the West can us us to be. Because the movie to me is not Senegalese at all. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, yeah. I, I think it's a great question. Yeah. And, and, and uh, you, you know, uh, an interesting reading of someone who, who, who literally think and if you look at the end who literally think that he is reading a european text has a Senegalese, and what he's doing is precisely pushing against people like you who look at the society through the fiction of its own representation what he's he's trying to destructure the myth which is the world of myth of a society which is not violent which is you know and it's a reflection on, on the crisis precisely of community values and the emergence of the individual so he could say i agree with what you say what is important and I don't know if, if, if it's African values only. I don't believe that, that I have to confess. But I think what he's pointing at is precisely the, 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 the crisis of African society and the impossibility of since independence to, to reconstruct that. And, and basically, his approach is pushing on the where it hurt uh, you know on the ethical order 
the crisis of the ethical order. And the crisis of the ethical order is shown through this very limited space where all these people are, are meeting and where you see the women are trying, taking advantage of the situation uh, to take whatever they want. The men are, and, and, and it's what is interesting, how we show that if you look and listen at what the women are asking for, they are asking for food. They are feeding the family. The men are drinking. So, so, so it, it, it's a critique of something which is happening and which has probably changed uh, African society. And we have to pay more attention to that. It doesn't mean that everything he's saying is true, but he's telling us, look at this. And he does it quite well, I think. It's interesting what you, uh, the, the question you pose, because he takes a, a story. I mean, this is his own translation, adaptation of uh, um, The Visit, mm -hmm. that he considers to be capturing something of a universal human truth, the idea of revenge in the first place, keeping something and seeking revenge after many many years coming back to 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 seek revenge and at the same time the universal notion that no human bond no human solidarity uh, resists the uh, corroding power the corrosive power of of money and uh, so here is Jibril Diop Mambeti falling in love with that story, like many people, because the visit has been adapted in many different ways, uh, cinema and other theater, etc. And thinking that this says something universal about humanity. And yes, transferring that into this African context and using it to tell also the the story of neo-colonialism and corruption and corrupted elites, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it is interesting that you basically you're saying that the very idea of translating it into an African context doesn't work for you, and you're you're totally opposed to him. What he's saying is this is a story that was not African <coughs> at all, but which captures something that he considers. Uh, uh, universal human truth, and he wants to test it in a way to try it in a in an African community which likes to think of itself as a community of solidarity, where people are really, as the mayor said uh, 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 when he first responds to Linger Ramatu, I mean he's just out of outrage. We don't do that here, which is what you say. And uh, yeah. So, so no, it's a, it's a good question. It's a good question, and that's a, that's a good discussion to have about this uh, this movie. Is that translation? Uh, 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 and it's very incredible. provocative when when the mayor shows up and give a gun to drama. <laughs> so kill yourself. <laughs> you know, we don't want to kill you. You kill yourself. Was he saying kill kill yourself or? We're giving this so that you can protect yourself, but it's not going to do you much good. No, he, he's telling that you know you have to do it. Oh, you okay. Have to, have to decide. I wasn't sure how to as do a that. service to your own community. <laughs> if you are really right. someone who believes in the community, yeah. right. you should be helping us by yes. why don't you do it? Yeah. Yeah. Totally turning around the notion of solidarity yeah. because that's what he is saying. And Khadija is very right. Mm -hmm. There are many things that are lost in translation. I mean, the whole thing is captured well but you, because you can't translate literally. But yeah, that passage was not, uh, the translation for that passage was not uh, very precise. Mm -hmm. But that is basically what the mayor was telling him. You need to be, uh, to, to consider your own community and please help us a little yeah. bit. Do your part. <laughs> Um, I don't want to keep you too much longer, but I want to give Norm maybe a, a chance to ask one last question of, of Bashir and Mamadou before we wrap up. 
Do you have a last question? Well, I think, um, I mean, in, in his interviews, uh, Jibril Diop Mambeti really highlighted the universal, what, what his aim was to, 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 to experiment with the universal value of, of this tale. So, um, and, and Duran Mat was, it was, it was about the, the post-war situation in Europe. And so there's maybe something that has to do with a, a sort of post-war situation in Senegal. So, but at the same time, that, that's, uh, I was interrupted um, just before, but the, the film ends on the, on the image of a, of a baobab. So, and it's the very last image. And I think, I mean, it's, 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 it's very symbolic about the Senegalese dimension, uh, identity of the, of the film. Well, Koloban is a, is a, is a place in Dakar. Actually, it's not, uh, the, the name itself is not invented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's where he was born. Yeah, he was born there uh, at the same time. And of course, yes, the, the Baobab is really the, the Savanna, the Sahel. Uh, mm -hmm. Is, uh, and it is it is one emblem of, of Senegal. It is the baobab and the lion. Those are the two emblems of official emblems of, of Senegal. Is there a third? No, it's the ba just the baobab it's and the, the lion. Baobab, yeah. yeah, that's why our teams are the lions. <laughs> but, but, but what you say is true also when you compare with. Duran Mat is the context is the post war, but Jibril Job Mambeti, the context is intervening in, in, in you know, the, the two decades that followed independence, which are the, the moment where the, the, the post colonial African state is collapsing and the collapse continues today. And it's what he's trying to, to account for. And, Again, what I was saying, in a kind of very poetic, which is ambiguous way of dealing with this place. What you said about the, the, the universality is interesting because usually uh, uh, people who, who help make African films, because film is very expensive, obviously, and you can't tell from the credit you have to go to many places. You have to go it's to ministries, funding. you have to go to uh, Cooperation Francaise, you have to go to the Ministry of Culture in France, etc. And usually you, unless you are someone like Djibril Djoban Beti or Osman Semben, people who give you money also have their own idea of what is African. They expect you to do what they think yeah. is an African movie. So they want you to tell an African story. And Ghibli Job Mambeti, his two movies, his two uh, major features, Tukibuki and, and are break, are groundbreaking. Tukibuki really is new wave. I mean, it has been compared to Piero Lufu, uh, Godard's style. And people were not used to, have, to, to having that kind of African cinema, uh, uh, very poetic, very symbolic, and, and, and what he did with Tukibuki. And in this case, also, instead of, I'm not going to tell you an African story, which is what you expect. I have this, I'm fond of this play by this German Swiss author, and I'm going to Africanize it. I'm going to just use it. And like everybody else, like, you know, Hollywood has used him in a, in a, in a movie. I'm going to do the same thing and I will translate it in my own language and use it to say what I have to say. And that was also a, a, a huge break in, uh, so yeah, it's, it's really a, a loss to have lost uh, this huge man. Yeah. Uh, and it's related to her question again, because, uh, you know, what, what does it mean to be an African? He was born and raised in, in an urban context. And he's, he's, you know, and I, and I think when he was 29, he was already in France. So, so, so it's people who have a kind of culture which is not necessary, they don't have a representation of Africa the way of the, you know, the first generation of independence, people who generally, you know, were born in villages. You know, and and Saint Ben, you see it, the mixture. 
Sembeli was born in Kazamas, but he was born in Kazamas from this Lebu family who are very, very urbanized. And, and he's always trying to negotiate with two ways of, of looking at Africa and what is Africa and what is But Khadija is right, I mean, very cosmopolitan. Yeah. Even in his life, I mean, and his brother as well. Yeah. By the way, the, 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 yeah. the Japanese woman in the in the movie is the wife of Waziz Job because Waziz Job's wife is his oh, uh, brother. Yeah, wow. is, um, oh. brother. Interesting. I don't know if they are still married, but yeah, she was. That was a while ago. Yeah, she's not the mother of Mati. So, uh, well, I'm sure we could go on for a long time, but I, yeah. I want to thank you. I want Nora to go back to sleep. Thank all of you for coming and joining us. Maybe, maybe in the spring we could show Tuki Buki. That would be really fun. <laughs>